so usually <laughs> I, I do completely inelastic collision. It's a useful um it's a useful situation to analyze and I think in these lecture videos I didn't see me doing completely inelastic collision. So I want you to spend a little bit of time going over completely <laughs> inelastic collision. Um, so let me let me start with a demo. There's a, a demo of uh, th there's a simulation that's useful in demonstrating. Um, so after we cover elastic and inelastic collisions, and I think elastic collision is conceptually simpler. It's the type of collision where energy is conserved, <laughs> and energy is conserved and momentum is conserved. That's elastic collision, and um, with the inelastic collisions, I think qualitatively people get that um, okay, energy is not conserved. And it's the completely inelastic collision that can sometimes be misleading because um, this is the kind of trick question that I like to ask. Uh, something like in a completely inelastic collision, is all of kinetic energy lost? And my hope hope in trying to trick people is that hoping that people will say yes i mean isn't it what completely inelastic means um, if we are not losing all the kinetic energy why are you calling it completely inelastic and um, let me see if uh, uh, Fat has a demo so this is one of my favorite labs that i was having to run it in um in a uh, flash workaround but um they finally updated this to uh, html5 so let me run the html5 version and demonstrate uh, what i'm getting at uh hopefully it'll work the way i think it'll work <laughs> i'm not I, I'm familiar with the flash version of this, not the, um, okay, yeah, so I think this will work. So let me do the, perhaps the, um, uh, the setup that a lot of people will, ha um, it seems intuitive and it seems very natural. Let me start out with that and we will uh, make it a little bit complicated a, a little bit after. Okay, 0 0.5. Enter. Okay, let me make the velocity to here. I think something like this is a quite natural um, interaction, like this. Um, I, you might have even seen this in a, a demo. Um, can I? All right, I, let me just switch. Um, and so I do this demo with the cart. One cart comes in, strikes. Uh, comes to a stop, second card moves forward. That's sort of what you see here. It's an elastic collision, 100% elastic. And um, I can show even the values of kinetic energy. Oh, wait, can I show values of... Hmm, I can't show values of individual... Yeah, all right, uh, I guess I'll have to... Uh, leave it there. So, okay, let me just show the total kinetic energy. You can see that before collision and after collision remains the same. Now, as we uh, reduce the elasticity, let's say to 70%, you will see that some aspect of this collision changes. For one, the ball one doesn't come to a complete stop anymore. It, uh, so the fact that the ball one came to a complete stop before, that is a feature of an elastic collision involving very specific setups um, of the same masses, the target ball at rest, head-on collision, when all those conditions are met, then ball one stops. But you mess up any of those conditions, like the elasticity, you don't have that anymore. And you see the kinetic energy going down. Now, so let's imagine you wanted to make this a uh, completely inelastic collision. Then, um, 
then uh, you know this is my third question <laughs> when the collision is completely inelastic after the collision what will the kinetic energy be should it be zero or should it be greater than zero and um and if you're thinking yeah if it's completely inelastic shouldn't the uh, uh, kinetic energy after collision be zero i want you to hold on to that and um test it against what you see so let me run the simulation and that is what that is what you see after the collision kinetic energy didn't quite go to zero um i think the value of kinetic energy we have right now is super inconvenient let me see if i can <laughs> let me make it even <laughs> okay let me do the collision again yeah so the kinetic energy doesn't go down to zero goes down to half so why are we calling this completely inelastic rather than um rather than you know 50 percent inelastic and strangely enough if you made it 50 percent in inelastic or 50 percent elastic then kinetic energy actually doesn't go down to um 50 percent because the in this particular setup when this goes down to 50 percent that's completely inelastic so i want you to think about this in terms of constraints the constraints on this interaction that's really what conservation laws are about conservation laws are putting constraints boxes around what this interaction can change and what it can't change so when we say a collision is elastic we have set it up so that um, kinetic energy cannot change and under the constraint apparently this ball one needs to stop as we make this inelastic we are in some sense removing a con constraint that energy must be conserved and depending on this percentage now it determines what the um what the final kinetic energy will be but there must be some additional constraint because when we said elasticity is zero percent, perhaps what we would have liked to see is that um, that this would be uh, the kinetic energy would go to zero after collision, but it doesn't. So we should think of what other constraint is there that that. Um, in a completely inelastic collision, the kinetic energy doesn't go to zero.